the Joe Rogan experience. Is there anyone else doing this? Uh, so there are many organizations working on the on the prevention side, right? So educating people, thinking about um, you know, policies, those kind of things, uh, which is very important, I think. Uh, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, we're the only ones that sort of do the the hard technology side of it. And yeah, I, I, I wish you know more people would do it. Um, you know, if if somebody else would clean the ocean, that'd be fine with us as well. Uh, but uh, until somebody else does it, yeah, we're kind of the ones that have to do it. That's so fascinating to me that out of the 7 billion people on the planet, sometimes it really does just take one person to, to act. One person do something about something that, I mean, I'm aware of, many people are aware of. Many people listening have heard about this. And, uh, and it's sort of one of those things that's in the back of your mind that doesn't affect you on a daily basis. So you say, well, that's a tragedy. That's a terrible thing. But it's not my problem. I have my own problems. But you, this one person decided to do something about it. And the fact that you did when you were 16 is so fascinating to me. And someone has to do it, right? Right. But isn't that weird? Someone has to, but nobody was doing shit until you came along. That's yeah. very interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I sometimes wonder, yeah. I, sometimes people ask me, like, why Why do you do it? And like, the answer, my answer would be, like, why not? Like, yeah. why isn't everyone doing this? My th one thing that I was thinking was, and this is my same feeling about pollution, uh, air pollution, is that once they figured out a way to use whatever is in the particulates in air pollution as a resource sure. and make it valuable, then people are going to be running to extract it out of the skies. And I felt the same way about the Pacific Garbage Patch and all the other ocean currents where they have this, this issue. So what is it the currents? bring everything together collectively into one area just because of the way the ocean moves exactly yeah, yeah. so you have these sort of the, the the current at the equator and then you have these boundary currents mm. and it sort of acts like the um yeah like the the sink in your bathtub right mm -hmm. so it's sort of where all the plastic wants to go now is it possible to take that stuff all of that pacific all those disgusting particles and use it for something yeah, I mean, sure. Um, actually, I have a few examples with me um, uh, in my bag, but it's not here right now. You but, can go grab it. Um, do you want yeah. to go grab it? No, I'll, I'll do it in a bit. Okay. Uh, I, I can describe it. Okay. It's a podcast, anyways. Um, so um, so what we do is we take the plastic out, and we um, we recycle that. We've, de we've developed a, a process for this, and we can turn it into new products. So actually, the, the, the pair of sunglasses that I've finally been able to wear after a dreaded northern European winter, um, they we already made that out of plastic that we took out of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And so you're wearing sunglasses that are recycled from the ocean? Exactly, and oh. and the idea is that we can do anything with this, right? So you can imagine sort of the a, a part of your next car or yeah. a, the, your chair or whatever. You can make that out of ocean plastic. And what we think is that the material itself isn't valuable enough, but it's really the the story behind it. So the fact that you can say, well, it's made out of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which we think will add value. So it's like the difference between a normal pebble and, and the piece of a, a, the, a, the Berlin Wall. It's right. you know, One is worth shit and the other is worth something. Right. Um, so that's what we kind of want to use as a way to, to then be able to fund the, the operations of the cleanup. I think that's a fantastic idea, and I think that'll be a huge value for people. I mean, I think people really want to buy something that they know is recycled out of something that was choking fish and birds to death. Yeah, and uh, not goes. only that. Uh, but Adidas is turning plastic from the ocean into $200 shoes. A sportswear maker is teaming up with something to sell three new shoes made with plastic pulled from the ocean. Exactly. Wow, that's yeah, so, awesome. That's the kind of stuff you can do. So, yeah, I mean, in this example, it's... so Adidas actually didn't use uh, plastic from the ocean. They, I think they just said that for, for marketing reasons. They, uh, they make that from uh, plastic that was sort of, uh, they call it ocean bound. So, oh, those um, lying motherfuckers. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> they got them. Yeah. That's um, bullshit. Right. So it's on the way to the ocean? Yeah, which I guess is any could be anything. Right? Fuck yeah. you! It's like we were gonna throw it out, but we decided <laughs> to make sneakers. Right. Oh, um, that's horrible. I mean, it's still. <laughs> <laughs> they got Jamie. <laughs> I've been trying. Yeah, I have some of those. <laughs> Do you have some of those? Yeah. Oh. They, they're very cool. I, I like I like them, and I like the the people that that work on it. That's but, all cute um, and everything, but that's a lie. Yeah. Well. Yeah. A white lie. I guess. Um, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so, so I mean, the, the composition of the plastic that we'll be pulling out of the ocean is, is pretty unique. It's uh, it's quite degraded uh, because of the decades of UV light hitting it. Um, so so we really had to develop a new process to to do this. So probably maybe in a year or so, we'll be actually be able to launch the first line of products made out of sort of real the real deal, the plastic actually coming out of the ocean. That's excellent. So you're going to sell like raw plastic and is there an issue of who owns the plastic i mean even because it because it is in the commons of the the yeah. ocean in international waters i think it'd be hilarious if somebody would um sort of raise their hand and say oh that's my plastic i put it in there <laughs> um i think then we have another kind of legal issue yeah um but I, but if it becomes a resource like oil yeah right? yeah i think there's some um there's like this these salvage laws that say if if you sort of salvage something from right. the international oceans, you can actually keep it. So, so that doesn't appear to be um, a, a, an issue. Uh, but yeah, definitely it will be uh, yeah sort of closing the circle. It will be a fun project too. Yeah, I mean it, it sounds it sounds like an amazing thing, and I guarantee people would be very very interested to buy things that they know were made out of something that was really a horrible side effect of civilization. Yeah, I think if you have the the choice between a normal, well, because let's use the sunglass example again, yeah. a normal pair or a pair coming out of the ocean, I think nine out of ten people would choose the latter. Oh, for sure. I mean, I think it would be giant for companies, too, to advertise that we only use 100% recycled from the ocean plastic. I mean, exactly. that would yeah. be gigantic. 